Hey everybody, today is Friday, May 19th, 2023 in sunny San Diego, California, and I'm Captain Perry here with you. Now, if you're new to the channel, beside me here is a scow bow mini cruiser that I'm building. Basically, my mission here is to build a strong, trailerable, 14-foot sailboat that's watertight and custom built to cross oceans. Now, in the last episode, you saw me finish up attaching the port side panel. That's the biggest panel I've worked on to date, so great achievement. But now I need to turn my attention back into the cabin and work on the cabin sole hatches. And real quick, before I begin, I do have a goal this summer, 2023, to reach 10,000 subscribers. And as you can see, I've still got a good ways to go. So please help me out by subscribing. I have put it out there that not only am I building this boat, but I plan to do a solo ocean crossing in it. So why not subscribe and see what happens? All right, let's get to it. So just so you know what I mean when I talk about working on the cabin sole hatches, let me take you inside here. So for those who may not know, the cabin sole is what we sailors call the floor of the boat. And my cabin sole is kind of unique because 95% of it is gonna be made up of cabin sole hatches. So I've got these large hatches that are going to slide out and open. And they secure not only by sliding under these lips, but also with a very strong latch made of stainless and G10. All right, using my laser measure here, I took detailed measurements in here and then drew up this plan. So this is what I'm going to work from. Hatch one will be the largest hatch that's up by the mast here. So we may as well start with that one and get it out of the way. And then we've got number two, number three, and number four to make. Before I get going on the cabin sole hatches, I want to do one small storage compartment panel. Now this panel is going to go between frame C5 and C4.5 and it's just aft of the swing stove I made. The compartment will measure 12 by 14 inches or 30 by 35 centimeters and it'd be ideal for tossing a backpack in there when you come down below or really anything you want to store near the galley. This would be ideal for it. It's about 18 inches or 46 centimeters deep. Okay, I've epoxied this vertical on now about three hours ago, just here at the bottom, a little bit at the top here, and a little bit in this hole here. And now that it's set, I'm going to go back and do all the fillets I need. Fillets are complete. After three hours, I'll move on to attaching the fiberglass. Thank you. 
Real quick, I'll show you, I was just testing out what a porthole would look like right here. And the measurement, I took a measurement from where I sit up to where my eyeballs are. And if I put a porthole right there, my eyes will be right in the middle of it. And I can see the horizon behind me, any ships coming or anything like that when I'm seated right there by the main bulkhead. That's uh, 260 millimeters by 130 millimeters, which is uh, in inches is right there. So I'm just seeing how it looks in cardboard first. This porthole would actually look out right over the aft deck. And a couple of the hatches, including hatch number one, happen to be exactly 1,071 millimeters long. And amazingly, one of my scrap pieces of foam was exactly that. So I can make hatch one and hatch four out of this piece and then make the rest out of a new sheet of foam. I originally bought 19 sheets of foam and now I've built all this and I still have eight full sheets left over here. So that's not bad. I think I'm gonna have spare left over. Well, here's a dry fit of that foam and it looks perfect. I've seen on a picture of a Class Globe 580 sailboat that they had a lot of holes in the hatches here. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. For one, you add a little airflow in the bilge. Two, it will make this panel lighter, just a little bit. But the main thing for me is if you took some water in through the main hatch, instead of just sloshing around on the cabin sole, they would make their way down into this center compartment and then I can uh, pump out each compartment and uh, clean up that mess. So I put these washers here as just an example of where the holes might be. Maybe five big holes right here and then another row right there and try to make everything symmetrical going down the center on hatches one, two, three, and four. Hatch five is over the battery, so it's not gonna have any holes. It's also elevated by about five inches. So it's better that the water be able to come down to this lower area. All right, if we come back here, I have moved the car and we got the fiberglassing station all set up. So I've got all the fiberglass and peel ply I need for the top side and the back side. Foams here and a little mixing station. Let's do it. Okay, this stage of fiberglassing is done for hatch one. And I wanna show you, I also added a layer of unthickened epoxy and then a layer of thickened epoxy on this storage panel. And that'll just protect the wood and it'll be easier to sand and make look nice. As you may have noticed, I made hatch five a long time ago. It was one year ago in episode 25. I made this with one layer of six ounce cloth and one layer of 1708, which is 25 ounce cloth. So together that's 31 ounces. This time for hatch number one and the rest of the hatches, I'm gonna try out making them with a layer of six ounce cloth and then 10 ounce and then six. So that's uh, 22 ounces. Of course, my hope is that'll still be very strong, but a bit lighter than this one turned out. And it's the next morning from the fiberglass work I did on hatch one, I made sure this time to add a really nice layer of thickened epoxy over the final layer of fiberglass and then the peel ply. And I'm hoping that should make a really impressive smooth surface. 
So let's check it out and see how I did. Okay, hatch number one is all cleaned up now. I used a box cutter to cut off the excess fiberglass, which you can do within about 12 hours of applying the fiberglass because it's still kind of leathery. And then I rounded the edges with a sander for uh, safety of your fingers. So now I've got a nice blank canvas to make a hatch. I need to cut half circles here and here and attach G10 plates on the back, and those will be the catches for the swinging latch, which is also made out of G10. That'll all have to wait for the next episode. I'm actually getting ready to head to Japan on vacation. The wife is Japanese, so I go about every year, and this year is special because the kids will spend the summer in Japanese school, which is pretty cool, but I will be back before the end of summer, so there'll be a bit of a wait between episodes, unless you guys want to see a couple of Japan videos. If you do, please let me know down in the comments and I'll try to make something. A special thank you this time to Michel, all the way in France, who is building the whole boat in CAD, and that should be pretty cool to see. If you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the links in the description, especially the Amazon wish list where you can buy essential gear for the boat. But hey, if nothing else, hit the like button, leave a comment, and make sure you're subscribed. That's all free. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Well, now let's make all preparations for getting underway. Hey, yeah. Uh, what's your name? Oh. Oh, get back to your station, or I'll have you